Hello and welcome back to SRB Gaming and Kerbal Space Program again, Real Solar System Episode 2, 3 today, and we are landing on Europa, uh, one of Jupiter's moons. Uh, yes, this is a manned landing, and we have one Kerbal in his landing pod getting ready to descend onto the moon. And uh, right now you're seeing my transfer ship, it's highly effective, it was actually what I built for a Mercury mission, and it wasn't quite enough to land on Mercury, although it can make orbit. But it's really effective for this, and I ended up with lots of leftover Delta V, although I did have to eject it later. Anyway, a uh, little background on Europa. It is one of the Galilean moons of Jupiter, which means it's the four largest ones, and it is the second closest of those four large moons. Uh, Io is closer, and you'll act there's Io right there. You'll actually see it multiple times during the video. Yeah, one of Jupiter's moons. It's a little bit smaller than the moon, Europa, our moon. Uh, its gravity is 1.3 meters per second, so it'll be similar to landing on the moon, just a little bit less gravity. <laughs> and the escape velocity is about 2 kilometers per second, so not that much. And uh, Europa is of interest in space exploration because it's possible that it has the ice uh, water under the ice crust, like liquid water, and th that would be a first of its kind on a planet, so... Nothing's actually landed on it before. They have done flybys. Anyway, back to Kerbal Space Program. This ship uses two of the Vasmir engines from Near Future Propulsion. Uh, I'm actually using them for most of the deorbiting right now and two reactors as well. And there was a point coming up that I was actually tempted to just land this entire thing. But then I realized that I didn't have any ladders and it would be kind of unstable and I didn't bring CAS parts to bolt it down. This ship was had to be very lightweight. Actually for future missions I have gotten a new mod that adds some really lightweight capsules so it should be a little bit easier to bring a couple more things along. But really br bringing any type of lander that's bigger than a couple tons is gonna it's really difficult in the real solar system because the K uh, Kerbal engines are optimized to about 60 percent of Earth's size and Earth is full size in the real solar system. So there's a view of the surface and burning straight up now just to uh, cut the vertical velocity. Interestingly Europa actually has an atmosphere. It is almost entirely oxygen but the atmosphere is so... the pressure is so... Th it is so thin. It's billions of times thinner than Earth's atmosphere. It's enormously thinner than Pluto's atmosphere. If he, Pluto actually does have an atmosphere they think. But uh, that is way smaller than Earth's atmosphere, like 300,000 times less. And then Europa is way smaller than Pluto's atmosphere. And I'm sorry I don't have exact numbers on that, but just take my word for it. And uh, there's another burn. So uh, in actually, some of the probes that have gone to Jupiter in real life, they have, like the Galileo probe, they crashed it into Jupiter because they... They didn't want any possibility of accidentally contaminating Europa because they think it has water on it. And, uh, you know, this video, I'm going to actually be ejecting a nuclear reactor into the surface. Actually, two nuclear reactors right about now. Yeah. So that thing is going to hit the ground and explode. And uh, that would go against every rule in real life. But whatever. I g nuclear reactors, meh, they're not dangerous at all especially not when they explode. Anyway, now we're down to just the lander module. It's a Mark 1 landing capsule. And oh, look there. Boom. Anyway, Mark 1 landing capsule. We've got an advanced RTG on top from uh, near future electric. Uh, just a small fuel tank, some landing legs, and there's a little ladder on the back and a small Rocco Max engine. I didn't bring any CAS parts because I figured this thing's going to be really stable considering how small it is. Um, yeah, it shouldn't really be an issue. And above us, you can't see it right now, but there's a Io and Jupiter. You can see them both very clearly. Europa has a lot of radiation in real life. Uh, just a couple day, one day exposure would result in either severe sickness or death if you didn't have shielding. So if any, there, if there are ever missions here, I mean, in the far future, it would have to account for that. And if you see right here, you actually see there's like parts on the surface. Oh, and there's the landing parts on the surface. Those are actually solar panel bits from the transfer stage that I threw into the surface. And uh, we're going to get the Kerbal over there and check it out. He's going to be the first Kerbal to set foot on Europa. 
and right there. So he's running along the ice off to check out these little scraps that turned out to be solar panel parts and they despawn a little later. But uh, <coughs> yeah, there's the lander. It's pretty desolate here, but and if this was real he would be now drilling the surface to test for uh, samples of liquid water. So planting the flag. And yeah, so uh, that mission was pretty pretty fun. And the transfer stage worked really well. I could have gone to any of the moons in the Jupiter system. I actually had a flyby of Ganymede that I got to see. Looked pretty interesting. Didn't see Callisto. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe. It really helps our channel. Also like the video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, just use the comment section. And uh, that's episode three. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.